there's one thing I want to emphasize on and it's why the parent index would not be valid and it's because when it's the root node we actually return an empty queue model index on our parent method so when the index actually receives the root node it's not going to be valid because it's an empty queue model index so when it's not valid we set the parent node to the root node and then we ask a child from the root node and there's one thing I forgot to correct and it's this one it needs an underscore so make sure you correct that one as well gonna quickly speed through the rest of the methods now since you know what they're all about anyway row count needs to return the amount of children an item has so this time we will actually use the given parent argument Remember when I said over and over that we didn't need the parent argument on our list model and our table model, but now it's gonna be very handy since we work with a tree model. We will get the internal pointer, which is our node, unless the parent is not valid, then we get the roots. Then we just return the child count of the node. Column count can return one for now, I'm gonna explain that later. flags method, just as in the previous tutorials, needs to return that the items are enabled and that the items are selectable. And we do that by returning those flags. Item is enabled or operator item is selectable. Header data. Let's just return scene graph for now to display on the header. Finally, data method. Remember that the data method returns something that the view wants to display. All we will do here is call internal pointer to get our node, then if it's display role, return the node name. Like so. If the index is valid, we pass the test we get the internal pointer which is the node if it's display role we return the node name there's also one thing we need to correct and it's an underscore on the row count method once that's done make sure you have imported the Qt core and Qt GUI libraries and then at the bottom we need to create a Q application instance we need to run it by calling execute we need to create a hierarchical data structure I have a more advanced one here which I will paste now and we need to create our scene graph model which we just finished implementing this one scene graph model by passing our root node to it which it stores in the protected member root node and once that's done we need to create a tree view like so call tree view and show those are the stuff you already done previously a thousands of times and then finally we call show I mean set model let's run this and bam we get a tree view which displays our data correctly it's actually displaying it exactly like the console output we got here so yeah, we're done. Successfully implemented a tree model for a tree view. Let's extend this now to a scene graph with icons, node types, etc. Let's make a method called type info for our node. It will return a string to describe the type of it. So define type info. This one is going to return node then let's make a few subclasses for our node class and call them light node, transform node, camera node, the usual stuff a scene graph would consist of, where all of them need to re-implement the type info method. So let's just copy those bits. And we require a parent. Call this transform node. Call the superclass constructor. And re implement.
implement the type info method. This one's gonna return transform. Let's also make one for a camera and a light. Camera node type info is gonna be camera and return camera. This is gonna be light node. Call light node superclass constructor and type info is gonna be light. Alright. We're not gonna use those nodes yet. I also noticed a bug with the header. We forgot to check if it's display role. Right now we're returning that string, scene graph, for every single role there is. Let's quickly fix that. If role equals cute core cute display role whoops display role then we return scene graph. Let's see what happens when we set column count to 2 instead of 1 before using our newly implemented nodes. Set column count to 2 and run. Expand. Oh, so column count actually controls the amount of sections the header has, just like the table model had. But it doesn't display the rest of the sections in a tree view style. That's because the parent method of our model returns zero on the second parameter, which is the column of the create index method. So we only tell it to build the hierarchical structure on the first column or the first section, which zero corresponds to. <coughs> what can we use the other sections for, such as the one we have here? Perhaps we want to display the type of our nodes that we just implemented in our custom nodes. Sounds like a good idea to me. Let's do that. To make that happen, we need to change two things. And it's the data method and the header data method. Let's start with the data method. If index, which is a Qmodel index that stores information about where an item is, if the column of the index is zero, and remember column corresponds to the header section if it's zero we return node name else we return type info let's change the header data as well if section is zero return scene graph else return type info let's run this and try it out and it works the type info shows our type info methods value that is returned and scene graph holds the names of our nodes. Let's quickly switch out some of the nodes at the bottom of our application. Let's change this one to a transform node, this to a camera node and the last one to a light node. Run it and as you can see it works perfectly. It automatically switches out the type info data. There was one bug which I noticed before running this and it was that all my subclasses actually inherited from object. I quickly switched it out to node. You should do it as well or otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. We've come far but there's still much to do. Let's make our items editable now. And to do that, first of all, we have to provide a flag called item is editable in our flags method. Once that's done, we actually have to implement a method called set data. If you remember, set data received an index, a Q variant which holds the value, a Q variant is a data holder for Qt applications, and a role again but we want the role to default to edit role so the inputs are qmodel index we'll use the internal pointer to get our node and then set the name of it and then a q variant which is the value and a role which is an int so if the index is valid and if role 
equals cute core cute edit role. We get our node by calling internal pointer. Once we have our node, we call set name, which doesn't exist yet, but we will implement it now. And once that's done, we will return true. This method needs to return true if it was successful. Else, return false by default. Let's go and implement the set name method for our node. Somewhere here works. Set name, simple as this name. Self underscore name equals name, and we're done. We should be able to edit items now. Run this, double click, write something, and bam, it works. But I don't like that the entire item actually disappears when you double click, and then if you wouldn't edit the item, you don't receive the name back. So, to fix that, let's go into data method. If it's display role or if it's edit role, we wish to return the node name. Now, if we double click, it doesn't disappear. <laughs> Let's add some icons to our scene graph viewer. We will use the resource compiler that ships with PyQt4 to compile our resources into binary and then import it into our application. To use the resource compiler, we first need to have some icons. And then we need to make an XML file that tells which of the icons we want to compile into binary. Here I have our light, camera and transform icons right from Maya 2011. And here is that XML file I talked about. It's very simple and holds our icons in the file tags. If you have folders, such as icons, you can use aliases to shorten that one. Like so. But in our case, we don't use folders. Once you're done with the XML file, we can go on and compile this. To compile this into binary, we need to send this XML file into the PyRCC4 executable. The executable will then compile it. It ships with PyQt4 when you install it. Let's do that. Write PyRCC4.exe and then the name of the XML file which is iconsqrc and then the output file, which is icons underscore rc pi, and then press enter. It's gonna generate a Python file which holds the icons in binary format. All we need to do is import this into our application to use the icons in our scene graph viewer.